During this exercise, we're going to take a look at two specific lookup functions. Now, we actually just looked at a couple of lookup functions. We looked at the VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP. Okay. Great, very common, a little more advanced and just because there's a few more arguments and you're potentially working with different worksheets, but very common lookup functions. Now we're going to look at two others. We're going to look at the index and the match function, two separate functions. We'll look at them individually and then we'll look at them nested together combined. Now, why are we looking at these? Well, like I said, the VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP are very common. Very, very common. Hey, I go into classrooms and I, I teach about Excel and people always want to learn about the VLOOKUP function. But, and I'll get into the classroom and I'll, I'll hey, one of our topics that we're going to get into is the VLOOKUP function inside of Excel. And it never seems to fail. There's always a couple of hands that come up and say, hey, VLOOKUP, great, I want to learn that. But I heard that there's two other functions called index and match that can do something very similar to the VLOOKUP but they don't have the limitations that the VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP has. So what's this all about? Well, this is why we're going to take a look at index and match. The VLOOKUP has some limitations. Let's take a look at the limitation and then we'll jump back here. So if I hop up back over to the VLOOKUP worksheet, remember this one? First name was already done for you. Last name, we did that together. And hopefully you spent some time, got a little bit of practice, and did the department and pay rate. Okay. Remember, you can always go back to the video, rewind, and rewatch that portion and take a look at what this function is all about. Well, the big limitation that the VLOOKUP has, I'm going to click into C3. I'm going to open up the FX window, just the argument window. So the first thing here is the lookup value. We want to get first name or last name or department or pay rate but we have to give the VLOOKUP something to look for, right? I mean, that makes sense. I want to find first name. Well, which first name do you want? Well, in order to do it, we give it an ID, such as the employee ID. So cell B3, here's the limitation. Excel, the VLOOKUP, takes cell B3. It jumps over to the table array, which is on the master employee list. It's in cells A1 to I38. But in order for it to find the contents of B31054, it jumps over to the list and it goes to the first column of that list. It hops over here and says, well, I'm going to look for the ID here. Okay, That's its default behavior, the first column of the list. Well, what if employee ID was not the first column? What if I did this? What if I put employee ID in the middle of the list? Well, if we told the VLOOKUP that this was the beginning of our list right here, A1 to I38 or whatever, it would go into the last name column and go look for that ID. Well, the ID is not there. So then we would have to start our list over here in the D column. But the VLOOKUP, it's great it would find it, but then if we told it to find the last name, it would be like, well, where's the last name at? It can't look to the left. The column index num cannot go negative. It can't go over here and look. It has to be a positive number to the right. So that's a limitation. VLOOKUP's great. Again, very popular, very commonly used, but that's a pretty big limitation. In order for me to work inside this list, I would have to move the employee ID all the way to the left, which may not seem like a big deal, but then you're changing the structure of your list that might mess up something else within this list. Okay, so let me undo that. Boop, get that employee ID back over there. All right, I'm going to hop back to the index and match functions worksheet. So that's a pretty big limitation. Plus, the VLOOKUP, it's very resource intensive. It's, it's not very fast. It's actually a pretty slow function. So if you've got hundreds of VLOOKUPs in a workbook, your workbook's going to chug along every time that needs to calculate. Okay, so something to be aware of. So this is why we're going to get into index and match to overcome those limitations. But other than that, the index and match functions together, merge together, they do something very similar to what the VLOOKUP and the HLOOKUP does for us, just without the limitations. So let's take a look. We're going to take a look at each of them individually. I've got column C and column D to do that. And then we'll do them together instead of column F. All right. So first, the index. Well, what does the index function do? 
Well, the index function returns a value at a specific position in a list. So we got two worksheets we're gonna work with here. We've got the index match functions worksheet, and then we've got the index match master employee list worksheet. So think of this list right here as just a big index. It's just a bunch of columns and rows of data. That's all it is, right? We've got letters along here at the top, but imagine those are numbers. Column number one, two, three, four, five, row number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, right? It's just a big grid. It's a big index of data. Well, the index function will allow us to find a value at a specific position in that range of data, in that index of data. Okay? So let's say I want to know what's at column three, row 10. Okay. So looking at this index here, what's at column three, row 10? Well, column number one, two, three, row 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Linda. So Linda is at the third column, row 10 of this data set. That's what the index function will do for us. Let's try it out. So I'm going to hop back here. I'm going to go to cell C4. And I'm just going to type this out. I'm going to say equals index open parentheses. Now, there's actually two different flavors of the index function. We are going to use the first one. It's got one, two, three arguments in there. It wants to know where's the array? Where's the collection of data? Where's the index of data? Okay. Then it wants to know which row do you want to search? Which optionally, which column do you want back from that array of data? So to make this a little more visual, I'll hit the FX button. I'm going to select the first one there and just hit OK. All right, three little things. So first thing, what's the array? Now an array, the collection of data can be a single column, a single row, or multiple columns and multiple rows. I'm gonna click into the array. I'm gonna go over to the index master employee list. I'm just gonna grab, I'll grab it all. Let's get all the way down there to the bottom. There we go. Now I wanna know what's at row 10 of that list and column three. Remember doing that? There it is, Linda right there. We did that earlier, right? So inside of this collection of data, A1 to I38, which has multiple columns and multiple rows, it wants to know well, which row do you want and which column do you want back, okay? And it gives us back Linda. Row 10, column three is Linda. I'll hit it, there it is. Linda. I'm going to copy that down. Boop. All right. Now something changed in there. That was the, the range. Let's change that. I'm going to make that range A1 to I38 absolute. Just lock that down. I always want it to be the same range. So I copy this down. It should give me Linda again. There it is. Let's just change the numbers. Let's say this time I want a row. Let's swap them. Let's no, can't swap them. I don't have 10 columns. Let's say I want, uh, row four, but uh, let's do column number, let's do four, column four. So then I got AT, so four and four. So at row four, one, two, three, four, there's the fourth row, but the fourth column, one, two, three, four, there's AT. This is the index function. So based on a position within your array, it's gonna give you a value back. All right, there we have it. Now. Let's take a look at the match function. But you know what? Let's pause right there for a moment. I'm gonna let you try that out first. Get the index done, just get an idea. Again, you may never use this all by itself. More often than not, you're gonna nest it in something else or nest another function in this function. I mean, when are you gonna tell it, oh, here are the numbers, right? Row four, column 10, right, whatever, right? Maybe you'll do that, but more often than not, you're gonna come up with some dynamic way to get those numbers. But just to get your mind wrapped around it, try that one out. This is the index function found inside of Excel. Try it out.